Hello, everyone. My name is Alicia Twisting Turbans, and today we're going to talk about mixing henna for hair. Now, the primary focus it will be on finding the best quality henna for your hair and getting the best henna stain. So, when looking for um, quality henna, the primary thing you want to look for is henna that has high natural dye content, which means it only contains at it, it contains around three percent of henna. Now that is very important. Next, you want to look for henna that has been um, found finely ground, shifted, and clean. That means it has no dirt, no twigs in it, and it can easily be rinsed from the hair. And finally, you want to look for henna that has a hundred percent, that is a hundred percent pure henna. The leaves is pure henna. That means it has no chemicals in it, no dye um, colorants in it, and there's also no other herbs and the henna mix. Now, now I'm going to talk about dye release. Now, the dye release is a very important part of the henna or hair coloring process. And you need um, particular ingredients to get, you know, that dye release. And you don't need all these extra ingredients like milk and teas to have great results. Actually, it will hinder results from your hair. Now, the ingredients you need is very simple. It's going to need to be lemon juice, orange juice, apple cider vinegar, or cranberry juice. Now, that's just a simple list of ingredients that you can easily find in your kitchen and using your hair, and you will get great dye results. But the only issue with using those ingredients is that the um, is that the uh, pH level in those ingredients are very low, which is around two, which will cause the hair to feel dry and you will need some type of, you know, deep conditioning afterwards using those products. Now, one ingredient that I like to use in my hair to get um, deep arbon hair stain or optimum henna, henna color is cream of tartar. It's cream of tartar. This is what I use in my hair, and the reason why is because it's derived from grapes, and the pH mimics the pH level of um, the hair, which is around five. The pH is around five, which means that you don't need to um, focus on conditioning the hair after using henna. You can just apply the henna to your hair, shampoo it out, and then continue with your oils and butters and other ingredients or stylers, wherever you're using your hair afterwards. Um, conditioning is really not necessary if you're using a good grade of henna and you're using cream of tartar along with the henna. And there's only really three ingredients you need. You don't need all these extra ingredients that would hinder the dye process, the dyeing process and the loss in from penetrating or entering the cuticles of the hair. Um, ingredient, the ingredients you need is your acidic solution, whether it's the lemon juice, if that's what you choose to use, or the cream of tartar and water, and um, the henna, of course. Now, the henna brand that I like, and I've used in the past, and it's never failed me whatsoever, is the um, the ancient um, the ancient sunrise um, brand, and this is it right here. Now, this particular um, brand of henna gives my hair a nice auburn tone. It leaves my hair conditioned and everything else. And they also send the item 
to independent lab, which tests the henna for, um, you know, other products or other, you know, things that may be hidden in the henna. So it's 100% pure. So this is the brand that I use. So without further ado, I am going to show you all how I mix the henna to um, get great results. So stay tuned. First, I'm going to pour the henna, 100 grams of henna into the bowl. Now I am going to pour one teaspoon of cream of tartar, which is my acidic solution into the bowl and mix and blend thoroughly with the henna. Okay, now that the um, cream of tartar and henna is thoroughly blended, next I am going to pour purified water along in the henna and mix it until it reaches a pancake batter or mashed potato-like consistency. As you can see, the henna looks very rich and thick. Now I'm going to cover the bowl with saran wrap and let it sit for eight to 12 hours. This will allow enough time for dye release. Okay, it's been 12 hours, and here is the finished product of the henna. This is what your henna should look like. Now I'm going to distribute the henna into this ice tray and then freeze until I'm ready to use it. This will make it easy for me to do root or new growth touch-ups. Furthermore, henna will last in the freezer up to six months. I guess that's just about it for right now. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And thank you all for watching. You have a wonderful day. Goodbye.